Question number one. When is 10 Questions Season 2 available? The answer, right now. Hey, everybody. It's Kyle Brandt. I'm the host on 10 Questions, and Season 2 is available now. We have all kinds of new tricks, all kinds of new contestants. You can also go back and check out Season 1. Matthew McConaughey episode, the Aaron Rodgers episode, Paul Rudd, every episode. You can listen, you can watch. It is 10 Questions with Kyle Brandt exclusively on Spotify. Empire. That quarterback carousel has only just begun to turn, and there's a few more worlds before this thing comes to a stop over the next several weeks and months. And to break it all down, I've enlisted the services of none other than Michael Vick. What's up, everybody? It's Mike Jones. Thanks for coming back for another episode of the Football Jones Podcast. You can read me at usatoday.com. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at ByMikeJones. And here we are. The offseason is in full force. We've got continued watch down in Houston with Deshaun Watson and the Texans on what's going to happen there. That standoff that doesn't look like either side's ready to budge. We've got continued trade rumors for... Carson Wentz in Philadelphia. We've got some unrest up in Seattle out of Russell Wilson. There's a lot that could happen, a lot that could change on this quarterback landscape. But at the same time, a lot of things could get worked out, and some of these guys might not be on the move. I wanted to pick the brain of Michael Vick, former NFL quarterback, one of the big stars during his day, now an analyst for Fox Sports, breaking down the NFL, and he knows a lot of these quarterbacks. He's plugged in with a lot of them. He's plugged in with a number of teams as well, so I wanted to get his insight on how he thinks this will play out, how he thinks things should play out, his expertise and his advice he would give some of these guys on how to handle their situations, whether it's Russell Wilson, whether it's Dak Prescott, Sean Watson, Carson Wentz, a number of these guys. Really great conversation here, so let's get to it right now. My talk with Michael Vick. Support for this podcast comes from McDonald's. What does a Sprite from McDonald's taste like? Many say it's electrifying. Others believe that refreshing first sip is the best part. But don't take our word for it. Let your taste buds make their own assessment. Get any size soft drink for only a dollar on the McDonald's one two three dollar menu. Go ahead, try a spicy Sprite, or enjoy a Coke, Diet Coke, Fanta, or Dr Pepper. Prices and participation may vary. Cannot be combined with any offer or combo meal. All right, and here he is. Happy to be joined by Michael Vick. Mike, how's everything going? I'm just chilling, man. Pouring up. I'm yep. pouring up right now. <laughs> Literally, pouring up water. There we go. Got to stay hydrated in South Florida, man. Yeah, man. So, you know, it, it, you're like the one spot where it's warm. Um, everywhere it's else. cool today. Crazy. Oh, it's is a little, it really? It's a little cool today. Yeah, that's why I got the uh, <laughs> my little Nike hoodie on and I'm just chilling, man. You know, enjoying the breeze. Won't get that too much. So, right. I got to enjoy it while it lasts. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, man, this is a crazy off season, especially for quarterbacks. So that's why I wanted to have you on here uh, to get your opinion. Um, on and what you think that this quarterback landscape is going to look like when it's all said and done. I mean, we've got um, obviously everybody just saw Brady win the Super Bowl. Sound like Russell Wilson's getting a little itchy there. You know, we don't know what's going to happen with Sean. Uh, yeah. Looks like the Eagles are about to you know work out something for Wentz. You know, there's just a lot of moving pieces, a lot of dominoes that could fall here. Can you uh, remember? I know quarterbacks always command a lot of attention, but. Has there been an offseason in your memory that kind of that this is even similar to? Nah, you know what, man? It, it seems like it comes around like every five or six years where we get the quarterback carousel for good reason. And yeah. why we have guys like Russell and D. Watt and Carson Wentz who are about to hit the market. You look out there, it's a lot of teams that um, need quarterbacks. There's a lot of serviceable quarterbacks out there. I mean, a la Marcus Mariota, who shined last year. So it you know, I look at his story as a Ryan Tannehill type of story, you know, that being reciprocated uh, for whatever reason. You know, now you got Mariota who's about to, you know, step into a role as a starter again after, after losing his spot. 
to a guy who was, you know, many people who didn't think was worthy of, it, you know, many people didn't think he was worthy of that position, <clears throat> but he earned it and, and, and you get that second chance. So now we see these guys, especially after Brady, right. having a chance to find a new team, start over, it's nothing like it. Sometimes the grass is green on the other side, for sure. How important is it, you know, obviously the quarterback, <clears throat> the straw that stirs it, but how important is fit and having everything around you um, because you've been in situations where you had to carry a heavy load. Um, then you, you've been in situations where you were selective and, and making your decision where you go to next. But so how important is that as a quarterback to find that situation where everything kind of is aligned, right? It's hard, man, because as quarterbacks, we try to look for the best possible situation, but I think in hindsight, we have to understand that everybody else is looking for that same situation too. But it's a lot of variables that come into it when you're dealing with free agency. I mean, obviously, I think first and foremost, guys are looking for a home, but number two, they want to get paid in the process. And everybody's situation is different, um, but positioning is very important. Um, what guys have to realize now is that salary caps are real. And uh, if, you, if you eat it up, you leave little to no room to sign guys in free agency and, and, and that free agency which at one point was all about you, don't translate into other guys. So it, it, it becomes a difficult situation. And I think it, it's for guys to pay attention to it and, and you know, find some ways to, to find the right team and, and, you know, modify their situation so they can bring in guys to help out. That's how you build the team. Do, does it, do you feel like that, that things are changing in the NFL where, where there's more player empowerment now? guys have a little more control about their futures instead of being just so locked in um, as the, uh, and I know it's not every position that can command that kind of like, in NBA, but, but, but what do you see when you think about the, the empowerment uh, that players have or don't have? Well, I think we got to start with Tom Brady and, you know, Tom's the goat for various reasons. One, uh, I guess, a, a additive to the numerous reasons why he's the goat is that, you know, he was able to make this situation, you know, um, believable. It came to life. And, you know, for him to come in and not just nitpick, but he was able to be coached through the process, coached hard, uh, but also allowed the liberty to make his own decisions, you know, who comes and goes. And he made all the right decisions. He, he did it right. The coaches trusted in him. The administration it trusted in him. And... You know, they got their bang for their buck, literally. Yeah. So, you know, that worked out. Now you got all these other guys who are on the outside looking in saying, you know, that worked. You got general managers now and all types of people in the organization looking, saying, all right, look, if we bring in a guy like uh, just Russell Wilson, hypothetically, if that happens, I don't think that's going to happen. But if it does down the road, because he's so young and still has a lot of football left in him, then they'll take that into consideration, open the doors. But it might start with you. You know, being a little lenient, you know, understanding yeah. what's around you. We know what you want to build. Help us build that, you know. What would your advice be uh, for, for Russell right now? I mean, obviously, he's been a guy who's a company guy, um, you know, <clears throat> and I don't know that he has it in his makeup to actually demand a trade. But, you know, he did talk about being frustrated about getting hit, frustrated about getting hit, but wanting input. Uh, how would you yeah. advise him to handle his situation there? Well, Russell's human, first and foremost, so we got to appreciate that part like look the man does you know when it's right and when it's wrong the, you know he has a Super Bowl under his belt should have had two for all you know uh, for a bunch of crazy reasons um but you know that's you know that's hindsight but you know Russell has to look at his situation and say all right I'm, I'm really in the driver's seat you know um in terms of what I want to do I love this organization I gave him my all and you can give him one more year mm -hmm. and and see what comes out of it um, but he also knows that he has, you know, five or six more solid years ahead of him and he can play into his 40s with his body body type. So, you know, I think he comes back another year, um, give it a trial run. Everybody open up, you know, for all the right reasons and, you know, allow changes to be made and make decisions collectively. And I think that's the way Seattle gets over the hump. Now, Russell has to also understand that he's, He's been on some good football teams, and I know what he's searching for. He's looking for that lead in the boom, that defense. The, you know, we got the offense. We need, you know, we need everything. 
but that's what everybody wants. Right. So you gotta, you know, you, you, you gotta give up a lot to gain a lot. And I, I think Russell, he's a smart man. He understands that. Now for him, you know, being to have some input in that position, he said he wants to have some input. How would that affect the locker room, you think, if you know that the quarterback's got the ear of the general manager? Does that call friction? Or can he serve as a good bridge between the coach and the GM um, and the locker room? Which one do you think? Would look, every guy in every locker room wants somebody that they can go to and say, hey, what do you think about this? Okay. How do you think we should be running, running this? Or is this the right formation? Is this the right defense? Is this the right offense? And you need guys who can be that buffer, that liaison. And like you say, bridge that gap. And if they can go to Russell and, and, and feel good about it without it being, you know, misconstrued or words being twisted and they can trust them, you know, that's camaraderie. That brings the locker room together. That brings everybody closer within the organization. That's how you win championships. And it's evident because that's what happened with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it wasn't just Brady. You know, it was everybody. They had a lot of veteran guys in, in, in that room, you know, from Leonard Fournette to uh, Antonio Brown. Um, to Grunt, guys who they trusted and believed in, along with Brady. So they all bought in. And if I was Bruce, Bruce Arians, I'm feeling the same way. I, I got Tom Brady. I'm allowed Tom Brady to, to GM this. Okay. Why wouldn't I? Right, right. You know, I mean, he's the greatest. Well, I trust him. And that's where it all starts, man. It starts with trust, trusting your guy, giving them, you know, free reigns to have open lines of communication, not only with people in the administration, but guys in their locker room and they can they can dialogue and it's always open. Gotcha. Now, speaking of trust, Deshaun Watson, a situation where there is no trust there, at least on his part. Um, <laughs> how, do you, how do you see this playing out? Because on one hand, I don't know how much leverage he really has. He just signed that deal. They could just say, hey, if you want to get paid, show up. Um, yeah. But at the same time, if a guy doesn't want to be there, um, so, so what, what do you see there? It's an unfortunate situation for both parties. I think first and foremost, the people are stepping in. David Cully, I know David Cully, we was together in Philadelphia. Yeah. He's one of my favorite coaches of all time. Uh, I say that wholeheartedly. Yeah. Uh, I love that man. He, he taught me about the, the game of football. He told me about the game of life uh, as a receivers coach. And he taught me how to play golf. Okay. And I really appreciate that. But great man. And Deshaun's a great friend, you know, so I kind of stand in the way, you know, I, I try to be, you know, that guy in between, but, you know, this is Deshaun's livelihood and this is his career. And obviously coach Cully gets it. He understands it. And, you know, contractually, I don't understand any of that language. So I'm out of it. Right. Uh, I just tell Deshaun, look, man, what, do what's best for you. And, 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 and just, you know, extend, open arms out to Coach Cully and have a conversation with him. This is a grown man. Uh, talk to him, tell him your feelings. Maybe he can help you and uh, you, you go from there, but at least you handled it the right way. And um, for Deshaun to go a long way, you know, right now, and I'm not saying he has to submit, you know, or be submissive in any way, um, you know, but just as, as, a, as, a, as a man who he, he knows he's his own entity and he's a, you know, businessman. And that's his approach and it like business. And, and D.Y. understands that he's going he's gonna to do it the right way and it'll all work out, trust me, in the next couple months. Okay, okay. Um, it's sticking in the state of Texas. Uh, Dak Prescott's in a position there where by not playing, by being injured, his worth was very clear on how important he is to the Cowboys. But yeah. did, they, did they botch this thing? two years ago and now they're they're screwed where either Dak is gone or he's on a franchise tag and then gone or do you think there's any hope that they get a long-term deal taken care of for him? Man, it's funny. I was just watching this a few minutes ago. You know, watching my man Acho and, and Marcellus Wiley will speak for yourself, talk about this topic and I'm like, this is just so up in the air. But man, look, I mean, I think it's another situation where, and I'm thinking about it like, man, maybe Dak should just figure out the happy medium you know, take a deal where you look, you can look into the unforeseeable future, but you can dictate like, yo, I, I know if I make X, you know, a little addition of subtraction, you know what's in your account. If I make X and I make this over the next couple of years, I'm gonna be super filthy. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be full up, I'm gonna be really rich. And, uh, you know, think about 
the guys that you want to play with, the guys around you. You got contracts coming up. C.D. Lamb will be up in a couple of years. You want to have him long term. Obviously, the situation with Zeke. You need the offensive line. You need defense. I'm not saying don't be a businessman in this situation, but also think about how you want this to play out for you. You know, I think if that's the, the mindset, you know, you think long term, team oriented long term, then these dudes will be, a, be playing. They'll be playing with some good players around them and they'll really be able to have a chance to compete come postseason, throughout the regular season, into the postseason, and for the Super Bowl. And, and you know, Brady did it for years, man. Brady did it for years. We've never seen Brady banking, breaking the bank. Never. You know, um, but you consistently see good players on, on both sides of the ball in New England over the course of the years for whatever reasons, whether they were just solid corners or solid safeties, and everybody's, you know, we win six championships like that. Yeah, you know, so I'm giving a little blueprint. Obviously, I'm not a general manager. I don't run any teams. I'm just seeing it from afar, and I watch it in this chair just like everybody else. But I admire it. So, you know, if I'm gonna throw my little two cents in, and the guy might listen, and hey, maybe he can take something from this conversation. But what is it like though when there when feelings get hurt or there's a lack of trust? Like I looked Kirk Cousins a few years ago in Washington. He was not gonna sign a long term deal there because he did not trust Bruce Allen and Daniel Snyder. He did him with the franchise tag twice. Then he went to Minnesota, got his money. Um, you know, is there? I, I love, I love, I love Kurt. <laughs> I don't mean to cut you off. Go ahead. You can finish no, no, go ahead. Go ahead. You understand? What <laughs> no, I was just, just a thought. You know, maybe, maybe the feeling was mutual. Maybe they didn't trust him. Okay. You know, so look, we'll tag you twice. Get what we can get out of you, and, <laughs> and you know, look, man, it's still a lot of money. You're still just playing football. I, I think right. every year you got to look at the NFL like, yo, I'm just under a one-year one year contract anyway. Okay, okay. Because, look, I can sign a five-year deal, two years of it guaranteed money, and then if, if you don't perform in that first year, they're going to be ready to get rid of you going into the second year. You might make that money, but, right. you know, it's exile, baby. Yeah. You go. You know, so yeah. what have you done for me lately, league? And every guy on all 32 teams, Every man on the roster will tell you that. You know, yeah. can't even enjoy a victory because you got to get ready for the next one. But that's what makes the game so special. You know, the pressure that come along with it. You know, all that we have to to, to deal with and, and everything that comes along with it and all the things that people like us, you know, we speculate on now. So been on both sides of it and I respect it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I do agree with you, man. Dak's in a good situation with a lot around him, if, if he can find a way. I mean, I don't know how you compare what he's got there to somewhere else. There's so many unknowns. Um, if they can get it worked yeah. out. They'll um, get it worked out, no doubt, without a doubt. Yeah. So so one of your, your former teams, Philly, you know, the talk is that they're they're going to pull the trigger on a trade for, on, for Wentz at some point soon. Are they making a mistake? Or do we know enough about Jalen Hurts to know that it's okay to move on from Carson Wentz. Well, I think we've seen enough with Hurts to feel comfortable moving on and building around him. I think we, I think we've seen enough of Carson um, to know that look, man, maybe it's time for, to let him move on. Okay. Mutual uh, agreement on both sides, man. We just part our ways, and Carson departs with a Super Bowl ring. That's what every player wants, mm -hmm. you know. Regardless if you started it and didn't finish it, you still got a ring. He made a contribution, you know, and through those 10 games, that team could have been five and five, you know, or, you know, they could have been three and seven, you know, it was in a good position, you know, so I look at this situation as, as both sides won. Philadelphia got something they hadn't had in years. And uh, we should be thankful for that. Uh, unfortunately, in this league, when your time is up, People will let you know. The people around you will let you know. Definitely the fan base will let you know. And that's what we respect about it the most. And right. you should appreciate that part. Like, yo, it, it's time to go. It's time to go. And uh, he'll land on his feet. And he'll, he'll, he'll play for a long time. Where's the best spot for him, you think? I like the Colts. Mm -hmm. I like him with the Colts. You know, I've been hearing people speculate on it. Uh, I also like, I, I, I say San Francisco, but I still like Jimmy G mm -hmm. and San Fran. So I won't get into that. Uh, I think Jimmy G is solid, but it's not going to be too many landing spots. So you got to pick and choose wisely where you go. Obviously Chicago, but I think Chicago, they found something in Mitch. It's just about confidence and learning. And that's what what's happening with Mitch. Sometimes when you get benched, you get, you learn more. And I've been 
a part of that. Never been benched, but been hurt and sidelined and been able to watch my backup go out there and do things that I hadn't even thought about. So we all learn from one another at the quarterback position. And I think uh, for Carson, he, he, he's in a good situation right now. He's got paid his money. He's got a ring. And now he get a chance to go out and earn another one. One more that I want to know what's your crystal ball or what you see uh, for Lamar Jackson. So he took a big leap this year. And I know he's a guy who's always compared to you, um, but, you know, similar games. But he got a, he got that playoff win this year. Um, yeah. You know, they still need, I think, more around him. I, I question kind of, you know, the, 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 the offensive coordinator, the play calling, and if they, they are equipped, um, could use, I think, some, some help in the skill position area. But what do you see for him uh, as when you get that one playoff win under your belt, what can we expect for him going forward? Well, when you look at the Baltimore Ravens, it looked like they have it all. You know, you look at the defense, you're like, I'm not, never worried about the Ravens' defense, and rightfully so. They've proven year after year consistently that they can be top in the league in all statistical categories. Um, you look at the offense, you say, all right, we got Lamar Jackson, and then you got, you know, Gus Edwards, and, you know, you had Ingram back there, and, you know, you got the rookie. Uh, I'm drawing a blank right now in his name. Uh, Dobbs, I think. Uh, he's pretty good. Hollywood Brown is a playmaker. I said you know, this past season, I think on, on one of our shows on, on, on Fox kickoff that they needed to feature Antonio Brown a, a little more. And in that playoff win, and I'm sorry, excuse me, Hollywood Brown. Right, right, yep. And, you know, they need to feature him a little more. And and they did. The game was amazing. Hollywood was in, and, and, and they did. So, you know, I think about the receivers, need a big time receiver, and they need to learn to use Hollywood Brown co co correctly. That's the offense. If they do that, they got offense. Lamar got instant offense. Bring in the receivers, a bunch of them out there in free agency. Chris Godwin, Galladay, all those guys should be hitting the market. These guys out there, you can make a blockbuster trade. You got the tight ends. You got everything you need, and you got Lamar progressing as a passer. So find that receiver, and then you got a complete team in Baltimore. Gotcha. Then you think that that leap, that next step forward for them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, I will say this, too. And, uh, you know, I, I've, I've said it all year, you, you know, I think Greg Roman needs to expand. Mm -hmm. You know, everything it can be subject to change. And he's been known as a run-oriented coach since the days of Kaepernick. And, um, you know, now it's time to open it up. Experience yeah. what, you know, five and four wides would be, like 70% of the game. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Three wides, you yeah. know, three in the tight. You know, you can always jump in pro sets and, and you can jump in, you know, your, your basic sets, but be creative when you do that. And it's a lot of ways to do it. You know, establish the run game, and, and which they have, but learn how to play action off of it with the right concepts. And that's what's most important, having the right concepts off your action. Is there is there a guy coming out of the draft that, I mean, everybody's high on Trevor Lawrence, but is there a guy coming out of the draft, that uh, the quarterback that, that you're most excited about seeing? Yeah, um, help me out, man. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, Trevor Lawrence and right. uh, there's Jack Wilson, there's Justin Fields, yeah, Justin you know, Ohio Fields State. and that kid from BYU. Right, right. Okay. Can't really tell you sequence or order in, in which they're drafted. I know Lawrence goes to Zach the Wilson. Yeah, that was it. Zach Wilson. Zach Wilson. Yeah, yeah. I think you say yeah. Yeah, Zach Wilson. Yeah. yeah, but he got a little swag, man. He got a little moxie. No. Um, I can see him landing in a lot of spots, man. Uh, hopefully, uh, you know, my Falcons will grab a quarterback in this draft and, and uh, you know, the guy who can learn from Matt Ryan um, and, and get ready to take over the franchise for the next 10 to 15 years. So it's enough guys that that's good enough that can land in a lot of good, a lot of, a lot of the right places without a yeah. doubt. I almost think Fields would be good there. I mean, I think I like, oh, no, no doubt. I like Fields there. You know, I actually had some discussions, some discussions with a couple of people about Fields and uh, they like him, man. So I, I think, yes, for, for Atlanta, I think he's a great quarterback, big, strong kid. Understands the game. Um, we spoke on a couple occasions uh -huh. uh, about, you know, the path to the draft. And we're becoming good friends, which is cool. That usually happens with a lot of the guys in the draft. And I'm excited about that, man. So uh, I like him. I like him in the land. I like him for, you know, out the blank. I like him for the culture, for sure. Gotcha. Good deal. Well, Mike, I really appreciate it. You've been great. Um, uh, always appreciate and enjoy your work on Fox. And uh, glad that... Uh, uh, you're you're in high demand because I was trying to get you during the season and I'm glad it finally worked out that we're able to get you now as we talk about this offseason. Absolutely. Timing is everything, baby. 
Yes, sir. Well, thanks. You have a great one. All right, you do the same. Introducing the new Verizon Business Unlimited plans. Now you can pick a plan for as low as $30 a month per line with AutoPay. Get 5G nationwide, plus massive data capacity, plus spam blocking features. And with Verizon Business Unlimited, you can mix and match the right plans for your business so you get more of what you need and none of what you don't. From Verizon, the network businesses rely on. 5G nationwide available in 1,800 plus cities on most VZ 5G devices. Monthly per line pricing with five plus lines on Biz Unlimited Start. Device payment, smartphone purchase, auto pay, and paper free billing required. Terms apply. We want the best of both worlds. We want a hybrid. A smarter hybrid cloud approach with IBM helps retailers manage supply chains with Watson AI while predicting demands with ease. The world is going hybrid with IBM. Visit ibm.com slash hybrid cloud. Hey there, it's John Kime with the John Kime Report podcast. I'm glad you're enjoying the Football Jones podcast with Mike Jones. When you're done, I invite you to listen to my podcast. Twice a week, my guests and I discuss the Washington football team and the NFL. The show features numerous NFL insiders, former and current players and executives, and taps into the insight gained in my 25-plus years covering this franchise. Check out the John Kime Report, another fine product offered by Empire Media. All right, hope you guys have a good one. It's going to be interesting to see. Any day now, we could see Carson Wentz traded, or we've been hearing that for a couple weeks now. This thing could drag out longer. The Eagles could play this thing slowly because they want to get as much as they possibly can. Maybe they're hoping that closer to the draft, a team's more desperate and they'll get more offered to them. Um, You know, maybe it's as free agency starts. Uh, We shall see. One guy that I don't think is going anywhere is Russell Wilson, as we talked about there. I talked to a number of people around the league in recent days and they said look russell's a company guy his feelings just gotta hurt a little bit a little bit of jealousy as you're watching uh tom brady win another one and you're also at the super bowl watching as mahomes is running for your life and you're thinking of all those hits that you took unnecessarily uh, because your line wasn't up to snuff your offense was a little bit out of date it's going to be interesting there I don't expect that he's going to demand a trade. I do think that the Seahawks, Pete Carroll, is listening. He's going to say, hey, Russell, have a seat in my office here. Let's figure this thing out. We've brought in a new offensive coordinator. We're going to do everything we can to get this thing fixed. Also, in addition to upgrading the offensive line, Pete Carroll's got to get that defense back right because it has not been what it was when Russell Wilson won his Super Bowl. Uh, So there's a lot of pressure a lot of load that Russell has to shoulder. So I think that he wants that alleviated. I think they might not give him everything, but I think the Seahawks are going to do what they can to make him happy. Don't see him going anywhere. Really, like I said, I'm not so sure how much leverage Deshaun Watson has there. Um, They really are intent on building this thing around him. Maybe it will take a sit down with David Culley, as Michael Vick explained. Maybe they can work this thing out. It's hard. He just signed that deal. The Texans don't feel pressure to move him. But at the same time, if the 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 face of your franchise wants no part and if a lot of people are calling and offering some sweet packages, maybe they wind up pulling the trigger. I don't know. Um, You know, Wentz, I agree. I think Philly's the best spot. I mean, the Philly's Indianapolis, I'm sorry, is the best spot for him. He's got Frank Reich there. He had his best year when Frank Reich was his offensive coordinator in Philly. Um, I think Philly is smart to go ahead and move on from him. A team that might be more desperate is the Bears. They're not as close to win-now mode, but they need a win. They need an offseason that's successful. They need to be competitive, or Matt Nagy might be out of a job. They are in a division where Aaron Rodgers obviously rules the roost uh there's an opportunity to to you know compete for that second spot because uh the vikings faltered a little bit maybe they think that wentz uh can be the answer there but if i'm wentz i'd rather go to the colts where i've got familiarity with frank reich and that roster is already a playoff roster there Uh, i'm not totally sold on jalen hurts there in philly but i do think that he's at least earned the right to compete for that starting job. You can move on from Wentz, get some picks, get some salary cap relief, 
um, and, and then see how things shake out from there. It's going to be interesting to see what a number of these teams do. Washington needs a quarterback. Do they call and get Marcus Mariota? Um, you know, is that something that could help them? I think they need a veteran, and they also need to draft. Uh, they re-signed Taylor Heineke. We don't know what's going to happen with Alex Smith, but either way, they've got to draft a guy, I think, and develop him uh, for the long term. Again, a lot of this stuff could shake out in the next several weeks. Free agency starts a month from now. Um, you know, the franchise tag uh, deadline will be right there at, before the start of uh, free agency. We'll see what happens there with Dak Prescott. I don't know how he's going to play this thing. I almost think he takes a bet on himself, plays into the tag again, and then reviews his options, either gets paid stupid money next year or he goes elsewhere, kind of like Kirk Cousins did, like we talked about there. But we shall see. A lot to keep our eyes on as this thing rolls on. I hope you guys have a great day. Thanks again for listening. Please do me a favor. Go to iTunes and uh, leave me a rating. Also, do me an even more important favor and take this link, share it with your friends, spread the word about the Football Jones podcast, and I will talk to you guys again next time.